Are you applying to college soon or maybe you're already in college and are you wondering what some very competitive college majors are? Either way, in this video, I'm going to go through some of the most competitive college majors out there. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Brooke. I've been teaching and tutoring for over a decade and a half. I teach SAT and ACT prep. I've scored perfectly on the SAT as an adult and the ACT as an adult, and I've coached students to perfect scores in the most recent versions of both exams. And if you want to know all the secrets of test prep, head over to supertutortv.com where we have the best SAT prep course ever and the best ACT prep course ever. I will share in over a hundred hours of available video content with you, all of the secrets that I know about all of these tests so that you can get a score as awesome as you are. We also have a mailing list. It's totally free. SuperTutorTV.com slash subscribe. We won't send you too much mail, just enough to tell you what we've got going on and alert you of any new videos, deals, etc., that we might have in the pipeline. We also are on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Find us there. Cool. All right. So one of the biggest questions that I get from students who are applying to college is should I declare a major? And if I declare a major, does it matter which one? And if I, if I declare one that's super popular, is that going to reduce my chances of admission? This is kind of a hard question to answer. In some ways, competitive majors can hit you a little bit harder if you're applying to a state school. Sometimes state schools even call majors, quote, impacted if they have more students who are applying to that major than they can let in. So that's one factor to kind of be aware of. If you're going to a state school, it might be harder to get into this major program, or it might be harder to gain admission to that school if that school has like a particular school of engineering and then they have other schools and you have to apply to the particular school and declare what program you're particularly interested in before you even get in then that can actually impact your admission rate. At smaller universities or private universities where they don't have impacted majors, Stanford, for example, if you get into Stanford, you can major pretty much in whatever you want. There might be some application process. There might be a few people who get rejected from a major here and there, maybe. But for the most part, if you do your homework and you fill out your forms and you do everything right, you can pretty much major in what you want. So it's not like you're gonna show up there and you only have a 10% chance of majoring in computer science. So it's really different depending on what kind of a school you go to. And every school's a little bit different. So what the impact factor of having these be competitive is, well, it's not entirely clear across all universities in the US. So that's something that you'll have to think about or unpack on your own. But what I am gonna do is talk about what some of these competitive majors are and maybe why they're so competitive, I'm not totally sure, and hopefully give you guys some insights into this whole process. Okay, the first one I'm gonna talk about is psychology. Psychology is a major that a lot of students pursue. It's one of the top majors that undergraduates pursue. What many people don't realize is when you major in psychology, typically if you want to work in the field of psychology, you need to have more than just a bachelor's. That doesn't mean that a bachelor's can't help you on your way if you want to become a therapist or a social worker or something like that. But usually you're going to have to go to graduate school anyway. And oftentimes you can go to graduate school in psychology without going undergrad. So if you're thinking about a major in psychology, remember that there are other options too. It doesn't mean you can't major in psychology. Again, I'm not trying to tell anybody don't major in these things because they're popular. But psychology is one area where it doesn't necessarily lead to a direct career path after you graduate. So, you know, you might think about other majors that might also be cool or fun. I think what happens is psychology is the one class that a lot of teenagers get to take in high school that is a social science. So students often get exposure to psychology earlier in their sort of academic career than other social sciences. So things like anthropology and sociology, though they might be just as fulfilling and interesting and fascinating to many people, or philosophy even, they get sort of buried on the wayside because psychology is the first class a lot of teenagers took when it came to social science. I would say in general, it probably doesn't help you that much if you declare that you want to go into psychology, unless you've got a lot of activities or you have this narrative that really builds toward it. And if you do, then, you know, that's something that you can put down. But if you don't and you think that there's like another way that you could pitch yourself or other areas that you might be interested in, don't feel like you have to declare it because a lot of people are doing it. So there you go. Number two, we'll do one other social science major, communications. I don't find a lot of high school students that I work with wanting to declare communications. I do find though that a lot of college students, once they get into college and they take a few intro courses, they typically might take an intro to comm class and it's fun and they like it 
and that's kind of why people gravitate towards communications, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But communications is a very popular major. It's not necessarily like on the list of top paying majors when you get out of college or anything. But for whatever reason, it's pretty popular and a lot of people do it. Okay, next, the arts. Music, theater, and film. So this one might be kind of a surprise to some of you, but think about it. The Juilliard School has a 6% admit rate. You know who else has like 6% admit rates? Ivy League schools, right? Stanford's like between four and 5%, Harvard's at like 5%. They're like literally right in that neighborhood. And they used to have a more competitive admit rate than some of those schools. Transferring to UCLA as a film major, 2% admit rate last year, 2%. That's really low because so many people apply to it. It's like insane. And so few people can get in. Obviously not true at every university, but those majors can be super competitive at some schools. So watch out. Next major, engineering. As many of you know, and as I've said in some of my other videos, getting into engineering programs often requires higher scores, higher grades, and more robust academic profiles than getting into a general letters, arts, and sciences college. And this goes for competitive universities in many ways and it also goes for less competitive universities. You can look at some state schools and their engineering admit rate could be, you know, between 10 and 20 percent and their general admit rate might be 40 to 50 percent. There can be huge discrepancies between an engineering school and a general school. So just be aware if you're going into engineering it can be very competitive from a admissions standpoint. Pre-med, my next one, or BSMD programs. So some of you might not know what BSMD programs are. What it means is BS is like Bachelor of Science. That's an undergraduate degree that you get. And MD is a doctorate. So that means you're going to medical school. There are programs at many universities in the US that allow you to basically apply to medical school straight out of high school. And what you do is you commit to getting this Bachelor of Science degree that then flows directly into a medical program. And if you get the grades and you take the classes that you have to take as a pre-med kind of student and you pass the bar in that sense, you're automatically enrolled in the medical school program. So you don't have to reapply to medical school. And a lot of times these are like six year programs or something like that. And you go through this program and after that, after you get out of it, you can start your residency and then you can just start your path to becoming a physician. Super competitive program. So even if you have a college that's not as competitive, but it has a BSMD program, that BSMD program can have admit rates that look like top 10 schools admit rates, even though it's a much less competitive university. So know that if you're trying to get into a program like that, it can be really competitive. The same goes for pre-med. There are not that many schools in the US that actually have a pre-med major. There are some schools where you have to apply to be in a pre-med program. And at almost every college and university, you have to take certain classes in order to be pre-med. And those classes are often notoriously weeder classes. And what I mean by that is they're so crazy hard. A lot of times students start getting bad grades in them and then they freak out, they drop and they switch majors or they switch paths, so to speak, if it's not actually their major. So just beware that pre-med can be a difficult path. It's very competitive. But it's not necessarily competitive if you go to a school where it's not a real program in the sense of getting in, because that just means you have to sign up for the classes. It's staying in that can sometimes be really tough because the workload itself is challenging. So there you go. But competitive major path. Next one is business. Business programs tend to be competitive. And this kind of goes for like competitive universities and less competitive universities. You can be going to like a regular old state school or like the Cal State program, for example, has a lot of impacted business majors throughout their system, which means that there are too many people who wanna go into business and not enough spots for them. So business in general can be very impacted. Related to business, my next one, economics and finance. Economics is one of the most popular majors at Ivy League universities. I think the most popular major, one news outlet reported. Also very popular with people who are applying to college. Uh, especially international students. So if you want to stand out as an international student and you're not really sure whether you're interested in econ or not, and you don't really have a story to back it up and you don't have the background in finance and you haven't been trading stocks on your own for fun and that's not the activity that you're gawking about, it might not be the best major to put down. 
because a lot of other people are putting it. But if your story is very honed toward economics and you really loved taking economics in school and it is your passion, you know, write about it and go for it. But just know that a lot of other people are probably into economics too. Next on my list, biology. Along with pre-med, obviously biology is a really popular major. For one, because it's often the most common major that people major in before going into medicine or health careers. I don't find a lot of students write about their passion for biology when I'm working with students doing college application essays, but I do find a lot of them talk about how they want to go into medicine, and that's the end game, and then they say, well, I want to do bio because I want to do medicine. And that's not to say that you shouldn't be telling that story. But if you're actually really into bio because you love bugs or you love, you know, cheetahs or mammals or whatever it is, that story might be interesting in your college application essays, I think, because it's a take that I don't see a lot. In any case, popular major, biology, there you go. Next major, and this one kind of surprised me, nursing. Did you know that a lot of nursing programs in the United States are very popular and there are way more people that want to get into them than there is space? I didn't even know this, and this goes not only, again, for competitive universities, Nursing is actually one of the top three majors at the University of Pennsylvania, the only Ivy League school that offers a nursing program. When I say nursing, I'm talking about four-year nursing programs in particular. Now, that's not to say that if you want to go into nursing that I want to discourage you at all. Like, nursing is a booming field, and there's lots of jobs in the medical industry, and there's lots of nursing jobs out in the world, and it's one of those jobs that you can get almost anywhere. So it's a great career field, and I totally encourage you to go into nursing if you want to go into nursing. But just know that individual particular programs can be competitive. To me, that just means you might have to apply to more of them, or you might have to get your scores up, or you might have to make sure that your math skills are on par so that you can pass the kind of tests you need to pass in order to become a nurse or to go into nursing school. So have your A game on, work hard, you can do it. Okay, next one dun, 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 is the last one. So we are finally to my number one, and those were all kind of in no particular order. Some of them are gonna be more competitive at one university than another. But this one is like the ultimate, everybody wants to major in it to me, and it is probably the most competitive major that I see right now with applicants. And it's also an extremely competitive major once you get into college, and that is computer science. So for whatever reason, probably because computer science is topping the list of like highest paying majors to graduate with right now, and because Silicon Valley is just kind of at breakout speed, crushing the S&P 500, people are really into computer science and a lot of people want to major in it. That means that if you're applying as a computer science major to college or university, it may be harder to stand out because a lot of other people are gonna be telling that same story. So you've just gotta make sure that your story is interesting and that your voice sings and that you have a way to stand out even if you're majoring in this thing that a lot of other people are interested in too. So I know some of you are wondering, okay, well, if I wanna major in computer science, should I just hide the fact that I wanna major in computer science? Should I not tell anyone? Like, what should I do? A few notes. The first thing you have to figure out is what school do you need to get into to get into the computer science program? And are you applying to a school where you have to get into the computer science program directly or can you get into the school of engineering and then transfer to computer science fairly easily because you don't actually declare your specific major until later? You have gotta figure out all those details because it's not a good idea to try to transfer in later. Transferring later to computer science is really, really hard. So if you know your computer science or bust, do not jeopardize your chances of being able to get into computer science. Now, that being said, I have a few strategies that you might be able to use that can help you increase your chances of pursuing your dream as a computer scientist. One is look for majors that are computer science but have slightly different names than just computer science by itself. Those majors tend to be less impacted and have higher admit rates, for example. UCLA has multiple computer science labeled majors, and they have admit rates that are posted on their website that tells you the exact admit rate of transfer students. Now, they don't have undergraduate statistics, but they do have the transfer data of how many transfer students and what percentage of transfer students got into each of these computer science programs. And you know what? When you add a couple words to computer science, it makes it easier to get into. So if you major in computer science and engineering, boom, 21% admit rate. If you want to major in computer science alone, 8%. Or at Berkeley, I think it's like 6%, and a couple years ago it was 4%. So you can see how if you just like make it computer science and something else a little bit, you might increase your chances, and you don't have to lie. You can still talk about how you love computer science because that's part of the computer science and engineering, right? There are also related majors to computer science, such as data analytics, still obviously popular, but maybe not quite as popular as computer science by itself, or things like, you know, at Stanford we had symbolic systems, 
you might find colleges where you have informatics majors or other kinds of computing or coding related majors that aren't just computer science. So there's like an angle on computer science. If you want to do computer science, but you're like, OMG, it is like so competitive. How am I ever going to make it? You might be able to increase your odds a little bit if you also increase your scope a little bit and say, hey, I like computer science, but maybe I also like engineering. And if I do the major that combines them, I might get a little better shot at getting in. I hope you guys like this video. So please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And no matter what major you want to pursue, just remember that just because it's popular doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that you might have a few other people along the way who are competing for spots. So I wish you guys the best of luck and I will see you in our next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.